Hello everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. My name is Daryl Bear, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the type tool inside of Maya 2016. What I wanna do is I wanna use the type tool to build up a logo that's a bit more complicated than the one that we're currently seeing. I wanna have some neon tubes floating in front of each one of these letters that kind of, kind of just make up the word. So to do that, we're gonna be using the type tool. Now I've already started this, I've got this basic word motion in there. I used the type tool to generate that. So it's got this kind of cool bevel that's giving me that nice little, little specular pop there. And I wanna have another piece of geometry that again makes up these neon tubes that sits in front of it. And I'm gonna be using the type tool to make those. The key thing is though, is I wanna maintain all the great editability that the type tool brings to the table. So if I change that underlying orange word that says motion to something different, I want my neon tubes to also receive those changes. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is create another type node in our scene, and we'll just kinda of slide that guy forward. So we've now got two type nodes in our scene, and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that all the information that's on this orange object in the, in the attributes, you know, like, so all the things that go into making this look the way it does, as far as the text is concerned, so the font, the font size, the tracking, the letting, the kerning, all that stuff, the alignment, all that stuff, we wanna have passed on to our second type object that's gonna ultimately become our neon tubes. So how do we go about doing that? Well, it's actually really easy to do inside of Maya. All we have to do is jump over into our node editor and start making some connections or some relationships between our different pieces of geometry. So we'll grab type one, we'll grab type two, we'll graph both of these guys into our window. And if we scroll in here, you can see there's a lot of nodes inside of here. We don't really wanna deal with all of these right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up a little bit by right mouse clicking, selecting everything in my graph, now holding down my shift key to deselect type one and type two, and then just hitting my erase graph button or my clear graph button. So by doing that, I've now isolated out on my list here. So like I said before, we wanna take all these attributes that are important to the way the, the logo looks from type one and pass that information into type two. So if we just grab our deselect everybody and hit our three key, we get a pretty complete list of the different nodes or different attributes on those nodes. And we just need to start dragging and dropping to make these relationships. So if I drag and drop something like text input, as soon as I do that, you can see, well, we're, we're, we're getting the text from type one, it's our hero object, and it's gonna drive type two. Other things that are important are things like the tracking, right? So if we grab that tracking node, um, you can see that relationship's been made. So um, space width scale, that's another important one if you have multiple lines of type. Certain ones I'm not worried about um, connecting up. Things like the max edge length or the, the things that are gonna be dealing with the geometry creation, I want those to be unique to each piece of each node or each piece of geometry. So I'm not gonna make those relationships. I'm really only concerned about tying together the ones that will be, um, you know, essentially the ones that are in the text tab here. So the last one that we wanna go ahead and make sure that we tie together is the alignment tab. And you'll notice that there's an output node here, right? But there's nothing on the input side. This is actually something that's kind of interesting. If you drag and drop this on the output side, so if you go, type one output to type two output, you'll notice that it actually goes through and it adds a new input node over there. So again, don't be afraid to drag and drop output to output. It will a lot of times go back and actually make the input node for you. So now we've got that all set up. And then obviously if we switch that alignment here, oops, we gotta do that on type one. Type one's our hero object. If we switch the alignment, you can see, you know, now they're center aligned on each other. So that looks pretty cool, but we have a problem. The font, isn't the same, right? So this is a, this is um, something that we need to address. So to do that, I need to get the complete list of attributes. Maya by default is filtering out things that it thinks that you aren't gonna wanna play with. So if you do a show all attributes, you can see that list just got longer and current font and current style is in that show all version. So when you show everything, you get back to the current font and current style. I have no idea why we're not displaying those by default. I should probably talk to somebody about that because. I use it all the time. Um, so that looks pretty good. So now that we've done that, we can close this guy down. And if we just, you know, even do something like this, like just set that guy in there, that's an effect that I wouldn't have been able to get to with an, ex, you know, like um, an extrusion with this really cool kind of bevel that's got that little arc to it with a specular highlight and then another a secondary almost extrusion floating in front of it. Without doing this kind of layering effect of multiple pieces of geometry, I would have never been able to get there, right? Which is, which is you know, pretty cool. So don't, don't be afraid to stack multiple versions of pieces of geometry up that have relationships to each other. It's really, it's a great workflow. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna get this guy, this gray guy to look like a neon tube. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna jump into the geometry section. 
and we're gonna go up to the top of that guy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the caps. So we'll get rid of those caps. So now it's just um, just the extrusion, basically. For that extrusion, I don't need four divisions. I only need one. So we'll kind of zero that guy out. And then we've got this extrusion um, distance here. We're gonna just drop that down really, really small, something like that. And what we're gonna do now is go over to the bevel and we're gonna turn on an outer bevel. So as soon as we do that, it starts to look a little bit more like a tube. So now if we just modify this a little bit, um, it's gonna look really cool. So let's just kind of scroll down here. We'll give it some extra divisions and I'm actually gonna go back to the top here and you can see it's a, it's a little jaggy, right? So we'll just crank that guy up, give it more divisions to work with there. So in this bevel, the first thing we're gonna do is switch from being a half um, shape to a half circle or I mean a quarter circle to a half circle. So now if we go ahead and we start to increase this extrude offset here, you know, something up to like a value of three or so, it starts to look a good bit like a tube. Now, give it some more divisions too, just to kind of clean that up guy, looks better. Um, I can adjust how thick this guy is with this offset, but the problem is it's kind of doing an outside offset, right? So it's sort of going up and out, and I really want those to kind of go more down and in, you know, kind of be a smaller version of the M, not a larger version of the M. So what we can do is we can actually, all these attributes you can flip to the negative side, right? So I can just make that be minus um, on the bevel distance and it goes to the inside, but it turned black because I've essentially turned it inside out. So the normals are all facing in now. So all we have to do is select that piece of geometry, go to modeling, mesh display, reverse, reverse those normals, and it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna just finish this off by adding on a nice um, blend material and kind of pumping that guy up and giving a little incandescence on there. So I wanted to have a little bit of shading, but you know, I really wanted to kind of glow and have that incandescence to it. So now that we've done that, what we've got is we've got objects that look the same. And because it's all built on that type tool, if we make a change, um, you know, like let's say we change the word, right? Here, just select it so it looks pretty when we do this. Um, if I put in an exclamation point there, you know, it just builds it for me automatically. And then because type object number two is, you know, a non-destructive workflow, non-destructive node, all the inputs that are driving it, you know, they, they basically just generate that on the fly for me. So I've now got a little, um, you know, logo that's obviously a little bit more complicated than it was before. So now we want to animate it. And this is, this is kind of cool. So in the type tool, there's an animation section. And the thing that's nice about the animation section in the type tool is it's non-destructive. So if you change the number of characters you have or the number of lines you have, that animation tool will basically work in, in, a, in a very elegant way. And I'll show you that a little bit more in depth now. So if we turn on animate, what we're gonna do is we're going to push this off an X kind of off screen, right? So we'll put that up to a value of 100. Um, I want it to be a little bit higher. I want it to kind of slide in and drop and I'm gonna give it a rotation of something like 99. So we'll just set a keyframe there. We'll move forward about 50 frames. Notice that there's a delay frames turned on. So the delay frames is gonna delay each character 50 frames before it starts the animation. So I'm gonna have this nice sort of wrapping effect as these guys kind of all come in and stack up on top of each other. So we'll just zero this out. Um, and then we'll set a key on that and We'll just kind of move, oh, looks like I didn't set a 90 degree rotation on this guy, I wanted to spin. So now what we have is we've got the orange letters coming in and doing this nice effect, this nice dropping effect. But what's happening is the neon tubes aren't going along for the ride. So we've just set all the keyframe information on type one, right, the node type one. Ultimately, this information is using something called the shell deformer to move each character. So what we want to do is we want to take the type information that's on type node one that drives shell deformer one. We want to have that same type information drive the shell deformer on the, on the white object or on the neon tube object. So how do we do that? Really simple. We jump back into um, our node editor. So we'll jump back into the node editor. We'll grab this guy and this guy. We'll go ahead and we'll graph those. So, as I said before, it's that shell deformer. So it's type one, you know, is driving the shell deformer, right? And then we've got type two, which has got to be, where is type two? Did I not grab it? I must not have grabbed it. Let's grab that again. Let's try that again. Let's just grab both those dudes. There we go. All right. Maybe I did grab it and I just wasn't seeing it. So we've got, there we are. We've got type two and we've got shell deformer two. Pretty straightforward, right? 
and we'll just grab, uh, we're going to grab the outputs of type one and have it instead of, you know, type two feeding this shell to former, we're going to have them feeding this guy. So if we hit two, we get our list of all of our attributes that are currently hooked up. If I just type anim on this, it starts to filter that out. So you can see if we hit two on this guy, it's, you know, it's basically position is driving position. It's just animation. You know, they're all tied together. So what we're going to do is instead of having type two driving shell to former two, again, type one's our hero object. We're just going to simply replace those connections. So we'll just do something like this and kind of do that to kind of clear it up. So we're just going to break the connection and remap them so that they're being based off of type one. Pretty straightforward. So now if we hit one here, kind of clear that out a little bit, you can see that type one now drives shell deformer one and shell deformer two, which is our neon tubes, right? So the last thing we need to do is jump into here and just make sure that um, enable animations turned on. You can turn that on in two places. You can, it's the same attribute, but if you look at type two here, animation, just make sure that's turned on. That, that tells it to start using that shell deformer. So here comes our type. It kind of wipes in there. It looks pretty good. If I wanted to, this is kind of cool. You know, I could adjust the, the delay frame so that the neon tube just has a little bit more of a delay. So the orange text lands first and the neon tube just sort of wipes in. And because again of this kind of very non-destructive nature of this, you know, that animation happens over 50 frames. And right now we have, you know, a few, a few characters in here, but this is the beautiful thing is if you animate with this um, and you start to change things like the number of characters, it doesn't matter. It, it's going to, it's all going to work, right? So if we just kind of slide this guy up here, you know, something like that, maybe we go over to uh, type one into the text section and we, so we'll just change that letting scale down a little bit and get those words a little closer to each other. Yeah, it looks good. And now check it out because it was done using that animation was done using the text tool, even though the number of characters has drastically changed, everything still updates and works, um, works appropriately. So that is pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my Mondays. If you um, click the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And next week, I'm actually going to be doing something else with the type tool. Again, in the uh, same idea of building up something that's more complicated off of the base type tool and showing you some things that you, you may not have uh, been aware of that you could do with it. So please take the time to, uh, to check that one out. Also, thanks again, everybody. Cheers.